Well, hello everyone. My name is Mark Levesque. I'm with For, For His Glory Ministries, and I'm coming to you today just to share some principles that we've actually been sharing around the world and quite heavily in Africa. And uh, we share uh, about the kingdom of God and how we actually live in two kingdoms here on earth. And part of the problem with life here on earth and part of the problem why life can be so difficult or seem so difficult is because we're not all aware that we actually do live in two kingdoms. We live in the kingdom of this world and we live in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God on earth. Now, Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, one of his purposes for coming to earth was actually to bring his kingdom to earth. And that's what he did. He brought his kingdom on earth. He was actually restoring a kingdom that had been lost. In the very beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he put them in a garden. And he told them that, they, that he would give them authority of everything in the earth and everything made of the earth. So they had complete authority in the earth. God's plan in the earth was to rule the earth through his sons and daughters in the earth, through the children of men. That was God's plan in the beginning. And then he told them to multiply and spread that garden all over the world. And so they were supposed to take that garden and turn the rest of the earth into a garden. Well, Adam and Eve rebelled against God, and they fell, and that let the enemy, the devil, into the world. And so that created problems in the world, and man had been cut off from the source of his authority, which is God's throne in heaven. And so man was here on earth. He had lost his authority. And so God promised that he would become a man and come to the earth to take back that authority, because he'd already given the earth to the sons of men. He couldn't take it back because he'd already given it to man. So he had a couple choices. He could start over. Or he could come as a man and take the earth back as a man and as God connected to his throne in heaven. And so that's what Jesus did. Jesus came to, to the earth to bring forth his kingdom, to restore his kingdom in the earth, and actually to restore the dominion that man had lost in the Garden of Eden. And man, man didn't have until Jesus came bringing it back to earth. So that was one of the main purposes of Jesus' coming to earth. A lot of people think Jesus came to the earth to actually get us into heaven. Well, that's just one of the th reasons he came. He also came for another very important reason. His primary purpose was not only just to get us into heaven, but to get heaven into us. He wanted to get the kingdom of heaven into us. So we're going to talk about two kingdoms in this segment, and then we're going to talk about the kingdom in future segments as well. And so today we're going to talk about one of the principles of the kingdom, certain kingdom keys. When Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom to Peter, he gave ways of operating and unlocking the kingdom authority in the earth. Even Christians don't know the authority that we've been given. Many Christians, most that I talk to, haven't learned about how to release the power of God that's actually within them. The Bible says that they that confess that Jesus is the Son of God... God dwells in them and they in God. We literally, the Bible says, have the power of the resurrection on the inside of us. Why aren't we releasing more of that power? Why aren't we living our lives more the way Jesus lived it when he was in the earth? Wouldn't it be a different world if, if millions of we who call ourselves Christians, who are followers of Jesus, were releasing the power that God put in us? We're not releasing it for a couple reasons, I believe. One is we don't expect to see it because we haven't seen a lot of it. That's one reason. Another reason is we don't understand our authority. We're trying to operate and overcome our flesh, sin, and this fallen world by the power that's in us. And it's not enough. We have to rise above our problems. We have to rise above them and exercise the authority that we have from the throne of God in the earth that God has given us through Jesus Christ. And so one of the most important things to realize is that we have been given a very special authority, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth, in his name. And so the, one of the best examples I've ever seen about the difference between power and authority is a police officer. You take a police officer, they have power on their person. They have their gun, they have their nightstick, that's power. But they also have authority, which is their badge and their uniform. And so a police officer has authority and has power. Now, if a police officer steps in front of an 18-wheeler and starts shooting his gun to stop the truck heading at him at 65 miles an hour, that police officer is going to get laid out flat because that there's not enough power on his person to stop that truck. But if that police officer steps in front of the truck, lifts up his or her hand, that truck will stop because the person driving that truck knows that their uniform and their badge represents authority and, and can wield a lot more power than what's in the person of the police officer. Because if that, if that truck driver goes past the police officer, Every radio car, the police force, every state police car, the police helicopters, everyone's going to be going after that truck because he just unleashed the power of the whole government. And so one of the things Jesus brought to earth was a government, 
a government from heaven onto earth, the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus gives us this power in his name. And so one of the first keys that we want to understand is a key that I call knowing our identity in Christ. Key number one is knowing our identity in Christ. So Jesus has put himself in us and put us in himself. And so when we are a believer, and so we have now identify with Christ, he actually becomes our life, he becomes our identity. And that is the first place that the devil attacks us is in our identity. And so the devil actually tempted Jesus with four temptations in the wilderness. We're taught usually that there were three temptations, but there were actually four. And the fourth temptation was the main temptation because that opened the door to the other temptations. You probably read the story when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. He was baptized by John, and then in the, when he came up out of the water, he heard his heavenly Father say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus literally heard his Father say who Jesus was. Jesus heard it, the people there heard it, John the Baptist heard it, and the devil heard it. And so when Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, the devil waited for Jesus to be at his weakest point and then appeared to him, and he came and tempted him with the most important temptation, the most significant temptation he had, which is the very temptation that Adam and Eve fell to. He wanted Jesus to doubt the word of God. What he heard his father say when he was baptized, he wanted him to doubt that. He also wanted Jesus to doubt his identity, who he was. And so the devil does the same thing to us. He did the same thing to Adam and Eve, and he beat them because Adam and Eve doubted the word of God, and they doubted who they were in God. So he came at Jesus with the same temptation. That was the foundation of his three other temptations. He said, if you be the son of God, that was the first temptation. He wanted Jesus, first of all, to doubt his identity, which God just said he was, the Son of God, and he wanted him to doubt the Word of God, what God said. And when he, get, when he can get us to doubt those two things, he has us, because we have to stand on the Word of God, what God says, know it for the truth that it is, but we also have to trust that when God says our identity is who he says we are, we need to believe that, because if we believe that, we access God's authority, and we actually can stand on what God says about us and who God says we are. So it's very important to remember who the Bible says we are, and not go with what the world says we are, or what other people say we are, or even our own inner voice of our flesh says we are. We have to change our point of view and believe the Word of God and believe what God says about us. So when God says that he that confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, and God dwells in him and he in God, we are in God and God in us. If the Bible says that now we are the sons of God, then we must believe that we are the sons of God. If the Bible says that we're blessed with all the blessings of God in our spirit, then we are blessed with all the blessings of God in our spirit. If we are children of Abraham through Jesus Christ, then we are children of Abraham through Jesus Christ. So it's very important to, to believe the word of God and trust it for what it says. And we also need to believe that when the word of God says that we are sons of God, sons and daughters of the Most High, children of God, we really are. And when the Bible says that we have kingdom authority here on earth, we really do. And so we need to believe these things and walk in these things and stand in our identity in Christ. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I hope you found it helpful. Look forward to, I look forward to sharing again with you in the, in the very near future. Thank you again. This is Mark Levesque from Forest Glory Ministries. Have a wonderful day.